Okay, I'm going to go over a very important part of the body today, and um, I'm titling this The Ark of Truth or The Ark of Deception. And within our body, we contain the entire story of the universe in a biblical term and in a uh, universal way. From the macrocosm to the microcosm, we are the center point of the universe and everything that it happens outside of us is a reflection of what's happening inside of us and to me this is remarkable this is what I've spent most of my awake life studying and really getting into and I love the aspect of how the body reflects consciousness that's all it is the body the physical world is showing us what is happening on the conscious level individually and collectively and uh, as I understand the body more and more and the the union between metaphysical and physical I begin to understand that all we need to really focus on is ourselves it's an inward journey and most of what happens outside of us is a distraction the outside is meant to direct us inward to see where our misalignment is and we tend to keep focused on the outside world and get focused on what's wrong with the government with everything else and as long as we stay focused on that from an external uh, view looking at what's wrong out in the world we will never solve the problem because peace will never show up in the world until we become peace peaceful beings within ourselves and the important part of the brain I'm going to be going over today is actually a part of the, your body that is in reality the real Ark of the Covenant. It's not a simile, it is actual, it is factual that this is the Ark of the Covenant. Um, also within the body is the Holy Grail, the devil is in your brain, Ganesh is in your head, it's all within us, every single thing. So it's really fascinating to me. So without any further ado, we're going to go ahead and go forward and cover some of this today. So, you are an infinitely powerful being of the universe. And universe, if you look at that word, it could be uni as in one, one song, one unified song, and you are a very intricate part of that. Just like your body, you, your physical body is one being, but also there are trillions of individual cells. We are a reflection of the same thing that happens with God. You know, the old view, the religious view, is that God is outside of us. We were expelled from God and we have to kiss God's butt to get back in to heaven or into that good graces with God. But in actuality, we are an inward division, meaning that we are all inside of God. If God is truly omnipresent, then it is everywhere and it is in every everything from the most uh, small quark to the largest galaxy. God is in everything and we are in God. So, within you, the microcosm lives the fractal reflection of the universe, the microcosm. The same patterns are used from the largest scale to the smallest. Any object is midpoint. You are the midpoint of the microcosm universe inside of you and the microcosm universe within you. It, is little, it literally goes in as far as it does out. And I mean that literally because inside of you, just think from a small atom's perception within your body. You have light, you have photons within your body. So imagine being inside of your body and there's light and there's cells and there's uh, organizations, like a liver could be its own little uh, galaxy or universe. It's just amazing about how from that perspective inside of us is just as large as what's outside. We are the midpoint. Within you is everything. I mean, absolutely everything. And, and the more I understand this, the less searching I do because my searching has come to an end because I get the whole thing. I really do. And uh, it, it's simple once you start seeing it from, from a certain perspective. And the cool thing about technology, like with what I'm sharing here, you, I can show you visuals and give you information that doesn't have to be cryptic anymore. I mean, the sages of the old had to use cryptic information because some people didn't know what they were talking about. So it, all this translation that's happened over the thousands of years has, has lost the truth. It's like that little story where you set a group of people in a circle and one person tells a story to the next person, whispers in their ear, and on and on and on. By the time that it gets to the end, it's not quite the same story. And that's happening to us. So we are reclaiming our truth, and that's the age that we are in. We are in the reawakening age. Reawakening means that 
we were at once awake ourselves. You know, we are the fallen ones that you hear about. We have fallen in our vibration. So, moment to moment, day to day, and year to year, you play out the story of the universe from the Big Bang on. So inside of you, there's genesis happening with new cells and explosions and all these things happening within your body, but that Big Bang never stopped. It's a continual process. In you are the major stories and landmarks in all spiritual text. And that's literal. And I like looking at the word spiritual here because if you look at the word spiritual and you break it down, it's, it's you in the middle of the spiral. And the spiral is the shape of the galaxy, the universe, everything. So once you start waking up to the fact that it is you and only you in the center of this and we're all part of the same thing, then that's when your spiritual awakening and your spiritual way of being is supposed to be actuated. When you start actually living and being it. A lot of us New Age people get into reading all this stuff but never really living it. And it's time to embody what we know in our minds or what we've been hearing all this, all this time. It's time to get with it. This clip here um, is pretty cool. It's all in your head. The top picture here you see is uh, Michelangelo's creation of man. You see God reaching out to Adam. It looks pretty innocent on one level, but when you start looking, you can see by this lower picture here, this is amazing to me, that it's the, it is the exact shape of the brain. Here, this veil that's God in is the, uh, represents God, is in the, inside your head. Another representation we're going to be going over in a second. So God is inside your head, and it's reaching out to Adam, the physical world, yourself. So really, this is a loop. You reaching out to yourself. And you can see down here with this picture, when you outline his um, God's cape and the angels and cherubs that are around him, it's the exact shape of a brain. I won't get into it because of the time period here, but all these are landmarks too, from the pituitary to other aspects, the brain column, it's all in here. And, you know, Michelangelo is said to be as part of, se of uh, secret um, sex. And the secret uh, sect people would have information, and it was always put in plain sight, but unless you knew the keys to unlock it, it was always hidden. So they could, they could be saying the truth right in front of you, and you would never know it. And we're going to get to that in a second, because our government does that, or every government actually. So, it's all in your mind. This little uh, here, picture here is a picture I put together. I won't go all over all of it. But here, your uh, brain stem, your pons, is the devil. Ganesh, if you actually turn your brain a certain way from underneath, it is an exact representation of Ganesh, complete with ears, trunks. The trunks are the trigeminal nerve that come out. Uh, it, it's amazing. And then the uh, spinal cord itself is the trunk of Ganesh. And you know, devil, the devil always had a particularly interesting tail, right? It always ended with a, a strong... A, a triangle shape, right? Like a point. It didn't just end like, say, a lizard's tail. It had a sharp point on it. Well, that sharp point is actually your sacrum. So the devil, when the devil's in control of you, your lower reptilian brain is what that represents. Remember, the devil is also represented in the Bible as a snake. That's a reptile. And that snake goes all the way down to your sacrum and controls your kundalini. When the devil is in charge of your lower brain, or your lower brain is in charge of you, let's put it that way, because the devil is inside of you. We may create devilish things outside of us, but it originates from within us. 